everyone who recycles is just not a criminal or a crook or, or wrong. People have had some hardships in life. Some people were born into poverty. Some people were born with a half a chance to really make it out here. I'm going to admit that, you know, it wasn't like, OK, well, society did this to me, and you know, it was other people's fault. It was definitely my fault that I ended up in the position that I am today. Right about the time we turned 18 or so was really when the uh, crack epidemic hit our community. And it hit us like a ton of bricks. It caused our loved ones throughout the community to steal, people that never stole before. Uh, and they were stealing from their own families. We struggled with him until finally one day, you know, we agreed, my mother and I, we're just gonna wash our hands of this guy. We're gonna let him go. It was very hard for my mother. I got there and he didn't look right. And I told him, I said, come on, Landers. If you can't get out of here, I said, I'll drag you out of here, man. You're my best friend, come on. She carried me out. She helped drag me out with her little bitty self. <laughs> she helped drag me out and um, got me to, to a place that there was some cushion at, and I laid down. And then I ended up very disoriented. And she stayed with me and had somebody go call 911. And they ran some x-rays, and they found out that I had a lacerated spleen and I had internal bleeding. I'm the director of a program for men who are wanting to make changes in their lives from drugs and alcohol. I really believe that this program can really work for those who choose to come. I, myself, who is an ex-addict, have concerns about his uh, situation to help him any way I can. Nothing grows unless from a seed unless it dies first, so, you know. So I've been through my valleys of weeping. I've been out here for a while, and I want to get back to some type of normalcy in my life. How you doing, cousin? What's up, cousin? It's so good to see you, man. I'm glad you came and made it down here. I told Landon, if you want to get his stuff together, that I have a bed waiting for him. So I'm here to pick him up. A lot of the family members haven't seen Landon in years. He hasn't seen his brother in 15 years. When you're out here like in, in, into drugs like this, you don't want your family member to see you. You know, you're always trying to stay away from them because you feel ashamed, you feel guilty, embarrassed, you know. It's just a humiliating situation. August 1st. That was the day I left from over there in Oakland from my shanty to come here. I learned that I wasn't loving myself out there. I was destroying myself out there, you know. My plans are to stay sober, to stay healthy, to one day find me a wife before I get too old, you know. <laughs> I'm 54 now, okay, hurry up. <laughs> Lord, I gotta trust in you. I wanna come out of this addiction. I want a wife. I want to live a quiet and peaceable life. I don't miss being on the streets. I don't miss that, no. But what I do miss is people. The love that we did share for one another and looking out for one another. You find it greater in that society than you do in this society. We have to look out for one another and care for one another because no one outside is going to look out and care for us. I know it's kind of surprising, but if you're going to do anything, you need to do it as soon as possible. If you want to prepare yourself to come, you can. I know it's not easy to wake up and be transferred, <laughs> but take your time okay. and get up. My kids always want to come down here. They want to see what mom's all about. Yep. My daughter, she's never known for the past 18 years, even though she's spoken to both of us, she doesn't know we're homeless and we live outside. I've never let them see that. I'm glad for Oscar and Sheila because they have a heart to want to do something different in their life. We're doing it. Now I know that this is my lifelong 
mission is to uh, reach back and pull somebody up. Okay, everybody. Yes, ma'am. I'm off to see the wizard. Appreciate life better. All the journeys of the past, I wouldn't change a thing, no matter how tragic it may have been. Do you take this woman to be your wedding wife? I do. I pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of our Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Kiss your bride. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put your hands together. At first, I didn't feel the need to have to be here. But today, it was like the first time I've seen him and since my mother passed. My mother passed in 89. Well, you know, there was a couple It allows me to do the forgiveness that I probably should have done. I, I would like to honor my wife, Suzette Goodwin. I'd like to honor her. Yes. And when I see her, I know that God loves you. To you, Suzanne, in the name of Jesus. Salute.